If you're interested in what I look like in real life, then make sure you check out my Instagram at Joe the Insomniac. Okay, for some quick background, I'm of Mexican descent, and in our culture, the dead and spirits are a big part of our culture as seen by Dile de los Metros, I butchered that. When I was a kid, my family would always share ghost stories from the old country in Mexico. I would like to share a few if you're willing to listen. This one is from my grandma. She states that, when she is a little girl, she saw the devil or some kind of creature imitating it. Back in the 1940s, many families were poor, and I mean really poor. She lived in a poor village in Guerrero, and to go to the bathroom, you literally had to take a trip to the forest, even at night in pitch black darkness, with only the stars and moonlight to guide you. She was there peeing when she walked back home, and she suddenly heard what sounded like a parade of horses coming her way. Of course, that was not possible as it was complete darkness. No one travelled the roads at the time. She saw a figure on top of a single horse, and she said he didn't look up. Just told her something and kept going before disappearing quickly after. When she arrived home, her mother saw her hair standing up on end. Now this meant that there was some kind of evil presence in her village. And now another story. She encountered the famous weeping woman, La Florina, in a similar situation while out in the woods at night. She said a woman who was half white and half shadow was walking down a dirt road while crying, giving out lament sounds. She couldn't see her face and she didn't seem to have any legs. Now this is my mother and father, in Mexico and other places in Latin America, there are many accounts of gnomes and evil nature spirits such as shapeshifters, forest imps and fairies. My mother told me the story of her sister who had a baby daughter one night. My aunt was sleeping, they lived in a village near forest and apparently she saw a little child walk around making noises. She had a young son, but he was sleeping in his room. This girl was a newborn child and shouldn't be able to walk yet. She had no idea whose child this was. She called the child thinking it was her son and it ran towards her room and under her bed. When she looked down getting ready to scold this child, which she thought was her son playing in the late hours of night, there was nothing there. In Mexico, it is believed that gnomes can kill and take the souls of children. This almost happened to my father. He was getting ready at my grandmother's house playing in the yard as a kid. Apparently they are going out later. But she had many trees. When suddenly, he saw a bunch of children on the tree cop calling his name, gesturing him to come up. His grandma said that he could play with kids, but of course. She saw nothing up there and held him inside because she knew what it was. She said some prayer completely freaking my dad out and said he's not allowed to go outside again. In another instance though, unfortunately, he was playing with his baby cousin sitting in a baby chair when suddenly his cousin just dropped her head like that and went to sleep and passed away. My dad called over his aunt and when examining her, they found marks on her neck, as though she's attacked by an unseen force. My mother said that her father and a neighbour were enemies, but there was something about this neighbour that scared the locals. There were many rumours and claims that he was a Nahuel, for this is so. Apparently when the house was sold, they found hidden within a book of spells, witchcraft and satanism, and other horrible stuff. Finally, the last story to tell, it involves ghosts from the Mexican Revolution. My mother was a young girl. This is basically a repeat of my grandmother's story, where she went out to use a bathroom at night, and when she looked up, 
she saw a man dressed in revolutionary era clothing sitting on a rock. No one was out of those times. He had an old Mexican revolution type sombrero and just looked in my mum's direction but had no face. Just a silhouette. She got up as fast as she could and ran back inside. It is said in her village that a Mexican revolutionary guerrero soldier was executed in that spot, hanging from a tree. This was common in the time as most revolutionaries were either hung or had a firing squad execute them. I've had very weird experiences before. Now I'm not from Sierra Nevada, but far north of that. I spend the majority of my free time in the summer, hiking, camping and fishing. I'm familiar with the area, the wildlife and ecosystem in general. I haven't posted anything like this just because I've never had the reasons to. But I had a weird feeling once and a strange reaction with my dog. Now the dog's a very experienced dog who's quite large. He's a male and about 130 pounds. Nothing scares him. I've literally seen him square off with a mountain lion and not react. Now it was on the smaller side but still a juvenile male. With a couple of good growls and posturing on my dog's side, it sent the cat running. Now I had another in the same area, would hear it crying. It seems to have come from the tree line at about dusk and the dog quickly scared us off in the same fashion. It does not get spooked is what I'm saying. But there's been a couple of times where he and I are out hiking and the woods suddenly go dead silent. Normally I'm assuming it's a predator or something or maybe people. But those couple of odd times where he's completely fearless normally and happy, he suddenly whimpers and cows next to me, standing on edge, clearly terrified. I should mention that a dog that size leaning on me can make me sort of want to fall over. He's nearly sent me down the side of a mountain before. Now, when this happened once, I heard a strange clicking sound that I couldn't explain. It's almost like it sent shudders through my body. But I'm not talking about a fear, like actual shudders, like when a sound's so loud that it passes through you. The one time this happened, I literally sprinted for my life. And it was almost like the second I passed a certain tree, the sound immediately continued like nothing had changed. That's the part that scares me the most. How can the sound turn off then on again so suddenly? I wouldn't have been so terrified if my dog wasn't so afraid, but that's what freaks me out. It was our second year in our new home in the suburb, specifically in the Philippines, Cagayan de Oro City. I was 8 years old at the time when I first discovered that Things I thought could just exist in stories were actually true, and I experienced it. It was a Sunday afternoon, and when we are told to get our butts moving because we're going to go to the mall, I'm really excited and happy that, after a long weekend, I got to spend a day at the mall playing at the arcade, so normally I would get excited and active. I took a shower and was so loud and noisy that, little did I know, things were about to go wrong. I was asking my babysitter if she saw where my shirt had gone and she pointed to the left side. And when I tried to look towards where my shirt was, my head slightly tilted to the right. Now it didn't bother me at first. I tried to move my head straight, but as to my inconvenience, a very sharp pain took to my neck and slowly and slowly, I couldn't do anything but tilt my head to the right. I shout to everyone in the house for help, and the babysitter rushes over to me. 
At first I thought she's gonna take this as a joke, but she realizes I'm in pain. So what we did was went to my grandmother's sister to check on me, and she replied that it's him ma duian and was annoyed by my antics and that I was being too noisy so slapping me was enough to make me realise my rudeness. A small dwarf like creature in the Filipino folklore, from what I remembered, there were two types of them, the one that is mostly good and evil being the other and to my stupid luck I annoyed the bad one. After we visited my grandmother's sister, we eventually went to the mall and ate at KFC. I specifically remembered what I ate and it was spaghetti. After that we went home. A few days later, I could tilt my head a little bit more to the other side and look like a normal person. My mum heard what was happening to me and told my babysitter to offer a black native chicken as a peace offering. Then a day later, things go back to normal. After the encounter, we let our house be blessed by a magamut, which is a witch doctor that specialised on dealing with things instead of hurting them. And nothing bad or paranormal happened since then. For my entire childhood, my father and I used to take late night walks due to his somnia from shift work. Our neighbourhood is considered to be very safe, and ultimately was an urban neighbourhood besides one of the roads towards the back of the neighbourhood being lined with a thick forest for about a mile and a quarter deep, which made a circle back on itself. All of these walks are very dear memories of mine, except for one, and it ended being the last one. Along the road with the tree line, there was a slight tree light to illuminate a small plot of land that somebody owned but was very overgrown and ill-kept. It was very common for us to walk this road to enjoy the sounds of the forest, the lack of illumination and the ease of circling back. One ordinary night as we are walking and making conversation, my father abruptly stops, pulls me closer puts a hand over my mouth, crouches with me, and points towards a single illuminated plot roughly a hundred yards away. At first, I don't see anything. I think he's pulling my leg, but as I began to look into the forest, I see a very small humanoid figure, roughly three feet in height, scrawny with long limbs. It almost materialized out of the bush line and cautiously takes in its surroundings before signalling towards the bush. After a few seconds, two other small humanoid figures materialise as well. After a brief moment of what looked to be a discussion, all three make a dash for the tree line. Once this happened, my father picked me up, threw me on his shoulder and we make a break for home which is about half a mile away. Now my dad is 6 foot 5, 220 pounds, but I'm only 120. He literally never showed a sign of slowing down. That's how scared he was. And after that night, we never took late night walks again. Instead, installed four bright motion detection lights on our porch. The few times I brought it up, he says he doesn't want to talk about it. Those figures still give me chills and the image of those three huddling together is very vivid 15 years on. I didn't see anything but I've had a few weird experiences out in the woods. I live near the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains, I hike up there pretty much from May to October. A few years ago, I decided to hike this pretty strenuous trail that leads to a huge rock slide. I park and notice that I'm the only person there. I have two dogs, get them out and start to go up the trail. About a mile in, I come to this clearing that has a huge teepee-like structure in it. 
The trees are woven together. I put down my walking stick and start taking pictures. There's a weird tall sapling that seems to be bent almost backwards that's woven in. I move up the trowel after the pictures and as soon as I walk past the tree structure, I immediately felt like I'm being watched and the woods went silent. It was so weird. No bugs, no birds, no small animal sounds, dead silent. I hike by myself all the time and don't get scared or creeped out easily. I've seen bears and I'm pretty sure there's cougars up there. I keep going up and the feeling's getting worse now, being way more intense, and my dogs are acting weird. These are experienced trowel dogs that don't really get weird like that, they always stay super close to me, not making a lot of noise. I realise that I've left my walking stick down by a tree structure, <sighs> oh well. I don't want to go back down there to get it. I got a quarter of a mile or so past the tree line now, and the feeling of being watched is unbearable. I'm thinking, okay, rationally, it's probably a big cat, so I head back down. The rational part of my brain is slowing down now. My fight response? Nah. I go full speed down at a 30 or 40 degree slope. I get down the tree structure and meadow and I look down where my walking stick is. It's gone. Like it's nowhere to be seen. It was pretty distinct too because it's made of aspen. I picked it up somewhere else and there's no aspen in this forest. I'm terrified. I kept running. I felt like it's being chased but I never saw anything. Never heard anything either. Yeah, it could have been a big cat but why did it only start after I passed the tree structure, and how did my stick go missing? I was nearly to the parking lot before the feeling of being watched finally left me, and I will never go back up there, not even in a group. I still get chills when I think about this. When I was about 7 or 8, every morning when I would wake up, I would go into my grandma's room and lay in bed with her until she got up. One morning, I'd go in, get some blankets and lay down with her, when I look over to the dresser, and in front of the closet, I kid you not, there's two 6 to 8 inch men. I just stared at them and froze because I was terrified. I finally closed my eyes hard and hoped they would go away. After a couple of seconds, I opened them up and they're gone. I've always wondered, I always wondered if what I saw in my mind was real, but I can picture it so vividly. Even what they were wearing. One had a red shirt, one had an orange shirt, and to this day, I'm now terrified of gnomes. Like I get sweaty palms and like flashbacks, almost like I have PTSD. I work for a small technical consulting firm. We have about 10 employees and two owners. Most of us are usually on site with clients full time. In some cases though, we have in-house work jobs that require us to go and work from the home office. My last gig ended and I had to go to the home office. Home office is a gorgeous, completely updated building 50 miles out from the city in a small farm country set about a mile back on a huge hill with a long driveway which is the only way in and out. The building is mostly glass and parking is right behind the building so I can literally turn around and see where my car is from where I sit. The office overlooks a driveway, so you can see anyone driving up, and mostly delivery guys. At first, it was really peaceful being out here. I'm an early bird, so it was a pleasant drive out in farm country. 
I didn't have to lock my car doors like I did when I worked downtown. I could gaze out my window at gorgeous green fields. But honestly, it got lonely. Which is why when UPS would show up with a package, I'd jump up to meet the delivery guy. Point being, I'm hyper aware of who's there. Some days, I would be the only person in the office. Some days there are three or four other co-workers in between assignments or working on short in-house work. One morning, it was just me and the other co-worker here. This particular co-worker and I would walk down the long driveway and back once a day to get some steps in. We did this particular morning and came back into the building. A few minutes later, he looks over at me and says, Look at our cars. Now we had only just walked past our cars a few minutes prior. Now all of our doors to our vehicles were open. All four doors on each of our vehicles. I hadn't heard a thing. No one had come up to us. The nearest farm was 12 miles away and my co-worker certainly hadn't done it. He was sitting 10 feet away from me the entire time. Someone had walked through miles upon miles of cornfields just to mess with our cars? And leave, not even take anything. Heck, my co-worker even had his iPad on the front seat. We looked around, closed the doors, locking them and went back inside the building. I have this horrible feeling when I'm alone in there now. It just doesn't make sense to me. I've never experienced anything like this. This happened to me about a week ago. I found a summer job at our local supermarket and about two weeks in, I got asked to work late shift. I accepted since I was in need of money and never slept early. Everything was fine and dandy until about 3am when a shirtless, scared up guy came in. After lingering around the store for a while, he quickly came up to the counter, making instant eye contact with me. And, as I was about to ask him if he needed any help, he whispers, Don't you dare move. I didn't answer him at first, so I asked him if he can repeat. At that point, he got agitated and yelled, don't make another sound or I'll cut you up, okay? In a swift motion, he vaulted over the counter going to the alcohol section, tried to grab a bottle of whiskey to hit me with, but thankfully, the owner hit a baseball bat under the counter. The moment he turned his back on me, I whack him full force in his knee. He winces in pain trying to get up. I winded my bat again, acting like I'm gonna hit him just to see him pull out a homemade shiv of sort. I let him get up. The moment he got up, he swung at me, lightly lacerating my wrists. I pushed him back with my baseball bat and he ran for the door and got out. The other day, I called the police showing them the security footage, but they haven't contacted me since. I think it's safe to say that I won't be working the late shift again for a long time. I'm just really glad that guy didn't cut an artery or something. If I wasn't so aware and didn't have the baseball bat, I know the situation could have ended in a far worse fashion. A few years ago, during what was probably the darkest period in my life. I worked overnight at a local Walmart. Six days a week, I would spend 9pm to 7am stocking anything from fishing laws to makeup. I've never been to a more depressing environment. Everyone was really aphetic and too caught up in their own depressing life to care about anyone else, including the managers. Walmarts have a generally wild, weird vibe to them anyway, but this was a 24-hour supercenter in rural western Virginia. 
So you can imagine the characters, the meth and opioid addicts mostly, that would show up throughout the night. We had no security guards and from what I've come to understand, a lot of cameras haven't worked properly in a while. Being one of the few young female overnight stalkers, I've encountered my fair share of unwanted advances, but the one who took the cake was the guy who showed up every time I went outside for a smoking break, regardless of the time, 2am, 4am, 6, doesn't matter. The dude would appear around the corner, trying to strike up a conversation within seconds of me stopping outside. It didn't matter what entrance I used, they're always there. At first, I assumed he worked there. I mean, why else would someone voluntarily lurk around a crappy Walmart this late? Pretty much everyone on the night shift during their two nightly 15 minutes breaks wouldn't encounter him. Maybe the timing's a coincidence, but no. I came to find out he doesn't even work there, even though he often wore a dark blue t-shirt like that of an overnight employee. I stopped going outside alone, and would only venture outside with one of my guy friends, particularly one I've been friends with since middle school. Even their presence doesn't deter him, and it become a store-wide joke. I was weirded out and not alarmed until he started getting a little more aggressive. He'd ask me if I was seeing anyone, and would ask me out, pretty much every chance he got. I was playing Grand Theft Auto 5 at the time, so I came up with a story about my scary long distance boyfriend Trevor from Northern California. Even then, he wasn't phased. I was really annoyed though and started ignoring him. Now one night when my main guy friend had called in sick and the others were working on something on the opposite side of the store, I went outside with two older women in my area. After a few minutes they went inside, and just as I was about to follow them, Walmart Creeper suddenly appeared and insisted on going to his car with me. He then literally tries grabbing me by my hand. I rip it away from him and lose it, sprinting inside. I report him to the head manager that night, and found out that he had a cousin who worked in there. Apparently he likes to hang out with his cousin. The cousin apologises profusely. The management's on a whole nother level of crappy, and doesn't do anything. They don't even ban him or say anything. I ended up quitting specifically because of this. I found out through a friend that the guy who was still hanging out at the store every night still does this and creeps on other weird women. Apparently he tried like hell to learn my name and where I lived, stalking me for months after. Apparently he was literally constantly upset that I wasn't there before disappearing without a trace. I can't help but think about how crappy the cameras were and why or why I couldn't have just had better security and taken me more seriously. So I have a good friend that I work with, I've known her for 15 years, and for the sake of this story, we'll call her M. We work at a restaurant slash theatre together, and often after our shift, we go to a local bar to have a drink and a talk. The bar has your usual crowd of guys looking to hit on pretty girls, though, and we often have to tell people to leave us alone. Em's not the best though. She can't always do that well. She often gets sucked into having conversations with weirdos, if no one is around to rescue her polite awkwardness. This happened to be the case a few nights ago. An older man approaches us and it seems harmless at first. She was alone reading and he was a professor that was drawn to people that seemed to be more intellectual. He claimed to be a regular guy at the bar and just wanted to get out and talk to feel less lonely. 
she pits at him and decides to be friendly. As the night progressed and he become more intoxicated, he starts saying stranger things, complimenting M, saying things that make her feel weirded out. He mentions something along the lines of, I have a lot of money in my bank and insinuated that it had been obtained illegally. Maybe he secretly sold drugs or something. All I know is that it sounded weird. He's a biochemistry professor too apparently, doesn't add up. M decided to head out and she'd hoped that she wouldn't see him at the bar again for a while, but M saw him very shortly thereafter. And not at the bar, but at our restaurant. She mentioned where she had worked to him by accident and forgotten about it. This man came to where she worked without invitation to talk to her. Like I mentioned before, we worked at a restaurant slash theatre. And on the day that he came in, she was working at the bar. Behind the desk where all the movies are. In order for customers to walk back there, they have to show their tickets. He didn't have a ticket, and he told the ticket man that he was M's uncle coming to say hello. And the ticket man lets him through, not saying anything. He went up to her and started trying to have a casual conversation with her. She was in shock that he found her at work and wondered how he could be there. She politely tries to brush him off and pretended to be busy, hoping he'd leave. He doesn't. He hung around waiting for a minute to talk to her. She tells the managers about it and one of them came to the rescue, taking him out. Later one night, she was at the bar across the street again and mentioned to this bartender who didn't seem to be surprised. Apparently, it's not the first time that he's been weird like this when girls are there. He's also done this to other girls literally following them. Maybe this is just some really old lonely person desperate for money or companionship. Maybe he's just socially awkward. But I don't know, it just doesn't seem right pretending you're someone's uncle to try and get closer to them. I hope he doesn't show up again. It's really shook my friend up and I don't like it. I work as a cashier at a grocery store and nothing about this night would have stuck out to me if it wasn't for this event. I had till 7pm to close shift and the store closed at 12am. I clock in and everything's the same old. However, early in my shift, I had a younger guy, probably mid-twenties, come in. He grabs a soda from the cooler, nothing special that sticks out in my mind. So my break time comes around 9pm, I go to the back to lock out, and then head out. I go to call my boyfriend at the time, and as I'm walking out, I saw the same younger guy that I rang up the soda for over an hour ago at the lottery ticket machine. Okay, whatever. He's bored. It's not uncommon to see the same customer coming back for a second time. I make my call, and my break's about to go up, so I clock back in. I get on my lane and look over to the lottery machine and he's gone. Fast forward about 30 minutes before closing, I'm cleaning up, and guess who I see over at the same machine? Yep, shady soda guy. We make brief eye contact and he walks out the store. Over the next 15 minutes, I get so busy cleaning and making sure that the store is ready for the day shift that I forget all about the soda guy. Time to clock out so I do so. I usually wait and walk out with the office checker and the security guard, but on this particular shift, I don't know the security guard and don't care too much for the office checker on duty, 
so I walk out without waiting. As I get out, I head to my minivan. As per company policy, I head to park at the end of the lot so customers can get closer to the store. As I make it halfway to my van, I see a weird blacked out car taking up two spaces in front of my van. And there's another in the distance. I start walking up faster with my key in hand. As I get closer to the car, I see four people in the car. Then two doors open, and somebody steps out, wearing all black, the soda guy. By the grace of God, or whatever you believe in, before they fully got out of the car, the security officer checker come walking out of the store, and they quickly get back in their car, literally speeding off. I don't even see a license plate. The security guard stopped and looked at me like he didn't know what was going on. I was freaking out, so rushed the rest of the way home, crying my eyes out. My brain, even after all these years, doesn't know how to process this. Was I overreacting? Was I about to be abducted? I still don't like thinking about it because it makes me tear up. At about 8pm last night, I was walking with a friend of mine, Sally, about a mile to the closest calf. With both girls in our late 20s, neither of us drive. Sally didn't have her Opal card, which is the Australian version of an Oyster card. So walking, that's our only option. It's summer over here, so it was fairly well lit and we're both walking down the main roads and not too concerned. When we finally arrive at this cafe and sit down. Now I was paying with my credit card. And sure enough, it was cash only. Sally was on the phone when I got back from the counter. So I just gestured her to stay poor and guard while I went to get the cash out. This is my home suburb. So I know there's ATMs around, and my best bet is a gas station about a block away. Now I'm doing a light jog so I don't keep Sally waiting, when a balding sweaty guy, probably in his late forties with a tank top and no shoes comes facing behind me as I pass the corner of the block. He walked for about 100 metres. I really don't think much of it. The gas station was the next building along, and it seemed like he'd just come out of a nice suburban house along the street, and it's not the witch in our, so I just assume he's going to the gas station as I am. He didn't even cross my mind as I entered this tiny convenience store, nor did he follow me in. In my peripheral vision, I saw him walk past the door and out of sight. I look around for an ATM that they have inside sometimes. Ah, <sighs> no luck. So I go up to this man in his late thirties, at the desk, reluctantly asking if they do a cash out. He smiles and says of course, saying who's with you. I have no idea who he's talking about at first, but he then points to the man from earlier, pacing around outside the store. Keep in mind, he didn't look at all menacing. He wasn't going back and forth just outside the door. He was just drifting in space outside, from the pavement to the gas pumps to the storefront seemingly aimlessly. Maybe he's on drugs. I tell the clerk no, not thinking much of it, and he says, he was staring at you before and I thought maybe he's your father. I laugh it off. I wasn't concerned at all. He was still ambling around outside. I couldn't imagine him having a fixed gaze on anything. I thank the clerk for the cash, but before I turn away, he says, just wait and see if he leaves. We wait for a few minutes in silence, and the guy begins to pace back and forth directly 
against the front wall of the store, looking straight ahead, but never in. It still looks like the man was just a drug addict and seemed harmless. Not once did I catch his gaze, so I figure it's safe to slip out, where it's starting to become dusk and kind of bright. Sally was texting me, where are you? I thank the guy at the desk again for his concern, assure him that I don't know the guy and am not involved in some weird scheme to rob the store. The clerk asks if I want him to walk out with me. I say that it should be alright, and begin walking away from the block. As I leave the store though, the drifting man stops pacing and makes a beeline for me from the other end of the building. I seriously don't think much of the guy at all up until this point, but now he's powering towards me. The hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I start to power walk so he doesn't think I'm actively trying to escape him, still trying to convince myself that I'm being paranoid and should be more casual. I don't look behind me to see how close he is. I've reached the pavement on the other side of the gas pumps when I hear the clerk outside. He's yelling at me, run! I make a break for it, looking over my shoulder. He grabbed the man from behind. The balding man isn't even glancing behind him or trying to escape. He's literally just staring at me, running away with this death stare. I kept running until I crossed the road and then turn around. Is still standing. The clerk is holding on to the man. The clerk and I are just looking at each other in pure bewilderment, not really knowing what to do. He makes a hand gesture to go and I wave thanks. I go back to Sally and we rush home a complete different way. It's a really weird experience. I'm just thankful that the gas station worker was so kind and caring. When I was younger, I worked at a gas station as an attendant. I was really hoping to do a good job to impress my supervisors, but I had a few things go wrong what made him lose faith in me. One of the scariest moments was a crazy local drove down by the station, hid in the bushes, and literally started shooting the pumps. My boss is convinced he's aiming for me, but it seemed like I was an unintended target, that he was actually trying to shoot the supplies. Paint cans and oil cans suffer the most damage. I can't figure out why on earth he was trying to do this. He is a real nutcase. I was lucky that the whole thing didn't blow up that day. Freaking crazy. This happened about six months ago, and it's really been bugging me since. This will be long, but I must set the scene. So my family has a cabin we've had since the 60s, and I've been going there my entire life throughout the years. It's nestled in a little town of less than 2,000, surrounding vast forest and farmland. You see cows everywhere and stray dogs that let you stroke them. You'll maybe see 30 people in a day if you go into the little town and shops around. Definition of a small country town for sure. Since I spent my entire life there, I know pretty much everyone. All my family knows everyone. Men dressed in western clothes with big jeans and old flannel shirts and belts with big buckles, women dressed in jeans and tank tops with country factory logos on them. They're all nice enough and keep to themselves. So I'm driving up there one night to meet my parents since they had been gone the night previously to open the cabin for spring. My boyfriend has also flown in so he can finally meet my family up there. I'd been driving until it got dark. About a 2 hour and 10 minute drive from my house, and 
He had been taken over driving from around 10. There's a little national park close by, about 15 miles of total land. Since I'd fallen asleep and couldn't give directions, he decided to log the address into the GPS. It took him through the back way through the park that I never drive through. So when he woke me up to ask me where the next turn is since the GPS said he couldn't go either way, it took me a minute to figure out where the hell are we? There were no lights anywhere and we're the only car for about 15 miles. There's long forest with tall giant trees on either side of the road with a lonely deer or two in the woods to keep us company. I mentioned switching drivers because I remembered that road which would lead directly into the intersection that would go through a small community up to the mountain by my cabin. But it was prime. Leave a tow baby on the side of the road and kidnap someone when they check it out territory. It was dark enough that the forest was thick enough that we joked some cult members are probably there. Hell, maybe they are. Needless to say, we decided stopping isn't a good idea. We eventually passed through a small clearing slash intersection with a dinky concrete building on the side of the road with one light on, and a car pulled in in the slanted gravel ground. My boyfriend drives forward. He then sees that there's two people there. My gut immediately twisted, and I start to feel sick. Sick enough to feel ice cold sweat running through my hair and my veins now are pumping through to my stomach. You never see people at night here, and it's two tame boys in fact, wearing nice clothes, night shorts and obnoxiously coloured sport workout clothing, aka very out of place like something's wrong. They see us coming and walk away from what appears to be an old beat up car, probably from the 1960s, and it's important to note that this was completely gone of any paint and rusting. They smile at us and wave. I don't have a clue who these people are, and I'm starting to hear noises around us. I knew a gas station was right up the road from us. They could have just walked from there, but there's no lights up the road and no reason to be here. The building around us is abandoned, but there's a light on the wall. I'm starting to think these are in on it. They walk out onto the road, almost blocking my boyfriend from going forward, who had to slow down continuously not to hit them. Suddenly the light goes out in the building. They constantly wave their arms and smile at us, saying something that we can't hear. We think about stopping, but decide it's stupid to. My boyfriend quickly drove around them, slamming on the gas, trying to calm me down since the whole scene scares the life out of me. Images of getting out of the car and something stranger or worse happening flew through my head. I look behind us and they're suddenly angry, staring at us, not moving an inch and the light flickers on in the background in the building. Who were those kids? Why were they wearing city clothes? They looked too young to be driving. I know it wasn't their car. And who was in the building? We finally made it out and found the intersection we wanted that led to the familiar gas station, and he didn't hesitate when I said I need to drive next. About 10 or so minutes later, we get to the cabin and explain what happened and my parents are terrified. God knows what would have happened if we had stopped and actually got out. I don't like to think of it. A little over a year ago, I worked at a gas station. It was one of those 24-7 ones with a mini mart inside of it and I worked the evening shift. Now, I saw and dealt with a lot of messed up things in that store, 
which just led me to roll my eyes when people were doing or saying creepy stuff. Hell, if I had one dollar for every time I was threatened with death, I'd be retired now. So one night, I was out in the store restocking shelves when one of the regulars came in and started talking to me. He was a full-blown druggie. He would have been in his fifties. And he was tweaking while sitting on me. By this point, I'm used to weird stuff and ignore it. He said some messed up things to me though. Something about what he wanted to do with me. I zone in and out of what he was saying. It wasn't uncommon for him to ramble about weird acts and other gross things. I tell him that I have to get back behind the counter because my co-worker needs me to make coffee for a customer. He was a bit irritated but said that he would talk to me later and left the shop. After making coffee, I had to restock drinks but the day team hadn't emptied the trolleys of boxes. So I took out the boxes to the big bin. The bin is located on another side of the store, but there's no cameras so people inside the store can't see you there. That used to make me nervous, but I had been there longer than some of the people who had come through and was used to the environment. As I was throwing the boxes in the bin, the tweaking guy from before comes up to me, grabs my arm. I try to play it off like he's goofing around and laugh and say something like, Hey, I know you like me, but you can't do that. My husband's going to get mad. Sounds like I wasn't trying much, but with people like him, it was best to remain friendly. The last time someone was more firm, he got knocked out by a right hook, and I was a lucky girl who got to witness it and call the police. He then gets angry and says, I told you, I was going to have my way with you. Now, I've stopped smiling, and I'm scared. He shoves me against the bin, and goes to unbuckle his belt when glass smashed. One of my favourite customers was across the road at a pub and saw him go straight for me, knowing his reputation, knowing something bad was happening. And when he saw what was going on, he smashes a bottle over his head. Cops were called and I don't see him again. As for the guy who saved me, i given him free coffee for a month. I refused outright to take out the boxes now. I'm just glad I got off okay and was saved that day. Probably the weirdest thing that happened to me in my life was when I was driving to a gas station one night. Now I was on a very long road trip at the time, heading from college to home. I literally had to drive hundreds of miles and I'm in the middle of the backwoods not seeing cars or buildings for miles. I'm starting to get worried because of how low my gas is running. I'm really thinking that I'm gonna have to tent it out here in the middle of the night or something, the last thing that I want to be doing. And hey, did I forget to mention that I'm terrified of the woods? Just as I'm thinking this, I decide to switch on the radio to try and calm my nerves. Even worse, they're playing ABBA songs, I really don't like ABBA songs, and I continue going. Luckily for me though, I've got the moonlight to help guide me, even though that my headlights aren't doing much to penetrate the woods. We now are entering the dangerously low gas territory, and I'm worried, but lo and behold what do I see? An old gas station up ahead. Oh, thank God, I think to myself. I was getting worried there. I pull into the gas station and stop for a second before getting out. I have a really weird feeling. I know it's quiet where I'm driving, but it's just far too quiet up here. I look around and don't see anyone. There's no one near the counter either, and it looks abandoned almost. 
I then hear a voice on the intercom. Yeah, just go pump your gas, we'll help you in a minute. In a horrible, raspy old voice. Now the very second that I go to unlock my door, all of the lights shut off. I know it's not a power outage either, but I can still hear the sounds of the intercom not being turned off fully. Needless to say, I turn my engine key. I'm shaking so much that I can't even put it into gear. Not to worry, adrenaline takes over. And I speed up to 60 like I've never drove so quick in my life. And don't bother looking back. As I've been driving for about half a minute, I can see lights in the distance behind me. Ah, oh, I'm scared to look. Turns out, all of the lights are on again in the gas station. I have no idea what happened that day or what they were planning to do with me. Things I do know for a fact though is that they purposely turned off the lights and were purposely waiting for someone to come there. And I also know that there was no help or way to find me if anything happened out there.